Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make an easy fluid simulation in Blender. Once we're done with this tutorial, we'll end up with this. So if you're interested in making that, please stick around and I'll show you how to make it. Uh, so when you open Blender, you'll see this. We're going to click on General to create a normal workspace. And here we'll have our cube and our camera up here. If we press naught on the numpad, we can look through our camera and see the cube there. So I'm going to stay in this view because I don't think we're going to change the camera too much uh, during this. I'm going to stay in this view, click the cube. I'm going to press S and Y. And I'll scale it up a little bit. That's a nice size. And I'm also going to press G, Z, 1 and move it up onto the axis like that. But now the camera is a little bit cropped, so I'm going to click the camera, press G, Z, and move it up so it's back in view. And that's that's quite a nice layout. Okay, so let's go through the basics of a, of a fluid simulation. So first fluid simulation, we need two things. We need a domain and we need a source. The domain is the area that the fluid simulation takes place. Blender looks at this area to see the four walls and the floor and the ceiling for the water being contained. In our case, our simulation, our domain is going to be this cube. So we also need a source. Um, for that, we're going to use a UV sphere. So do Shift A, Mesh, UV sphere. It's a bit big, so I'll press S and about 0.3 I think would be a good size. Enter, and then I'll use GZ to bring them up and GY to bring them over here. That looks good to me. Uh, as you can see, we can't really see through our thing at the moment. So if you come up here, you'll see this little icon. That is X-ray, and that allows us to see through. So now we have our source of water that's going to be producing our water and our domain that's going to be containing it. So now we need to apply uh, the domain and the source to these objects. Uh, we'll start with the domain. So let's click our cube, come over here to Physics Properties. This is where uh, all of the fluid things are going to be accessed. We're going to come up here to Fluid and change this to Domain. Here we go. This is, this is now our domain. Um, but as you can see, it's set to Gas, but we want it to be Liquid. And we'll also want to increase the resolution divisions for a more realistic fluid. Um, I'm going to think, I think I'm going to go up to around 50. 50 is, is a good kind of midpoint, as we don't want to spend too long baking this out. So we've got this. Uh, we also want to increase, mm, I think we'll leave that as it is now. For a more realistic fluid, you can increase the minimum and uh, maximum time steps to between 4 and 7. Um, so if you want to do that, you can go ahead. Uh, but for saving time today, I'm just going to leave it between 1 and 4. Um, but you're welcome to turn up if you'd like. We're going to leave all this the same. This is about splashes. It's the flip fluid simulation settings. Uh, I never really change these, um, but I'm sure they're quite complicated, so we don't really need that. But what we do need is diffusion and mesh. We're going to turn on diffusion, and this uh, basically changes, changes the viscosity of our fluid. Um, right now, if we click these dots here, it's set to water. Um, so that's what we want, but if you wanted it to be more like honey or oil, um, then you can see this changes the settings here, but we want water. So let's leave it as that. Um, next, well, we can close this up now. Uh, next, we're going to leave particles um, because they're very intense on the system and require a lot more um, time. For, um, so just to save time today, we're just going to be making a simple simulation. So we'll leave particles out for now. We're going to go to mesh and we're going to enable mesh. And this basically um, gives our fluid, uh, makes our fluid into an object. So without ticking mesh, we just have particles and we wouldn't be able to apply a kind of fluid material, a liquid material to them. Um, it would just be particles um, wasn't around inside. So applying the mesh is very important. Uh, we're going to leave the uprest factor and all of that as is. And for now, we can close that up. Okay. This is, this is all looking good. Um, now we need to come down here. If you're in Blender 2.9 or higher, you're going to need to change from Replay to either Modular or All. Modular bakes um, the data and then bakes the um, mesh. 
uh, all will bake them both together. I'm going to set it to all. Uh, actually, let's set it to modular. Let's set it to modular. So bake data and bake mesh separately. So we also need to tick is resumable. We're going to click that there. And we're also going to change uh, the end frame to, I think, 75. Cool. You can also change where your fluid bakes to, um, but I'm leaving mine as the default settings. So now we have our domain set up, we can set up our source, and that's over here. We're going to change the fluid to flow this time, and we want it to be liquid. We can change it from geometry to inflow. This is basically saying that our, our source here, our mesh, is going to be producing water, whereas if it was set to geometry, it would simply um, fall as a sphere to the ground and that would be our, our water in the scene. Um, so if you want that, you can leave it as geometry, but for me, I'm going to be changing it to inflow. Here it says use flow. That basically means, is it going to be producing water? Um, so at the moment it is, yes, it's ticked, um, but if we turn it off, it won't be producing any water. I want to set up like a kind of tap situation. So I want it to turn on and then turn off. So I think around frame 45, I'll have it turn off. So if it's turned on here, I'll keyframe it to be turned on like this. I'll go to frame 46, press the arrow key to move along one frame, turn it off and keyframe that. So now it turns off. Brilliant. And it will run up to frame 75. We can change that here to frame 75 as that's how long our simulation is going to be. Brilliant. So it comes on, turns off. That's going to be working like a tap now. So, now that that is all done, we are ready to go ahead and bake. So, I'll see you after this is finished baking. Okay, so the data has finished. Let's have a look at how it looks. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Now we need to bake the mesh. Okay, let's have a look. Let's come out of x-ray mode so we can't see these particles anymore. And let's have a look. That looks good to me. We definitely do have a fluid simulation here. If you can see, it's a little bit jagged. So to sort that out, we can right click and click shade smooth here. Brilliant. You'll also notice that this is still here. Uh, if you don't want your original sphere to be there, you can turn it off up here. That way we don't see it in the viewport. But when we come to the actual render, it will still show up. So to stop it showing up in our final render when we export this, we'll come up here to this icon. Click this. This basically will show if it's in a render or not. And you can see that it still is. All of these are still in the render. So to have that uh, sphere not appear, we can turn it off in the render. And now when we render it out, it will look like it does in the viewport. Okay. So we have our fluid simulation, let's click play. And that looks good. All right, let's head to material view. At the moment it's looking like a principled BSDF, very white, um, but we want it to look like water. And actually we can look here as well in the cycles um, viewport. So if we come up here and into film, change from EV to cycles as we're going to be exporting this in cycles. It's a principal BSDF. So to check the material, click it and come down here to materials. We want to be changing from a principal BSDF to a glass BSDF. That's here. It's already looking more like water. It looks a bit strange though. So to fix that, we're going to be adding a plane as there's no items in the frame for it to uh, refract the light. So we're going to be doing shift A and adding in a plane. I'm going to go back to uh, material view, come underneath and move this plane up until the water just comes below it. That looks fine to me. Spent way too long sorting that out. So this is our scene. You can see now the camera looks a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit more. 
and that looks good to me. I'll bring it down. There you go. There you go. That's good. Cool. In rendered view, it looks like this. Uh, we need to change some more material settings though. So we're going to be bringing the roughness down uh, to around zero. I think that'll be fine. We're also going to be setting the index of refraction to uh, 4 by 3, which is 1.3 recurring. That is the index of refraction of water, so how it refracts light. Um, and that is all we need to do for the materials. Uh, you can change the color if you'd like to something a bit weird, but I'm going to be leaving mine as normal. So uh, to make the glass view look even better, we can come again to our film settings, come to film, set transparent and transparent glass. That'll make it look a bit nicer as well. So that is looking really good. Uh, I'm going to make our plane a bit bigger. Uh, shall I fill it? No, I think what I'm going to do is leave it at this size. And I'm going to come to object view so it's a bit easier to manage. I'll, by pressing tab, I'll come into my uh, edit mode. Um, I'll click vertices up here. And we're basically going to be raising these two walls up that are in the camera viewport. So uh, with these selected, I'll go on extrude tool over here and just drag them up like that. And to make it look even better, I'll click these two vertices again, hold shift, click them. Control B, a command B on a Mac to bevel them like that. And then we can shade smooth this plane and we've got a nice curved surface which will look quite nice. Um, I'm not too happy with the camera angle still. I know I've messed around with it a lot, so I'm just going to sort that out quickly. Uh, I can use view here to lock the camera to view so that I can rotate around. If I click my fluid, I can press the uh, full stop on my numpad to select it as my rotation. And that way I can rotate around it and find a nice camera angle. That looks good to me. And I'll change from camera to view. There we go. And to hide that menu. And that looks that looks all good to me. So here is our final scene. Let's get ready to export it. So we can come over here to our output settings. Here we can set the resolution. Uh, I'd set mine at around 68%. 68% is just above 720p, so it can be fit into a 720p scene. Uh, we've already set our end frame to 75 and I'll be getting to 1. Uh, we can set our output. I'll quickly go and set mine to the uh, right location. Once that is done, you want to make sure that your file format is PNG and that you're definitely exporting into a, its own folder because we'll be producing multiple PNG files and seven, uh, 25, uh, 24 frames per second is good um, and I believe we are ready to export our final thing. Okay, now we've covered making a basic fluid simulation we're ready to talk about effectors. Um, they are very very easy to add um, so we're gonna basically be rewinding a few steps um, to earlier on in the tutorial and we're going to be unbaking our simulation by freeing the bake in the physics properties free the data like this because we're going to be need to be rebaking our entire thing I'll go to x-ray mode again and we want to be bringing in our effector it can be anything you want uh, I think I'm going to bring in just a cube shrink it down a little bit maybe make it a bit taller and bring it in just like this. Get rid of X-ray again. Invisible our cube just so I can see what this looks like in the viewport. And that looks good to me. Just slightly coming through the floor. And this can be our effector. To set an effector, we come to fluid. Change this from none to effector. And it is as simple as that. We now have a collision effector. Here you can set the surface thickness, um, that basically adds extra thickness to our mesh 
um, depending on if your fluid is passing through uh, the mesh. So if it is, increase the surface thickness and it should be all good. So we're going to need to uninvisible our cube again, come back to x-ray and we will rebake our simulation. Brilliant. We can see through our, flu uh, through our domain that this is filling up and it's passing around the effector. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we can bake our mesh. Brilliant. Let's go out of x-ray and have a look at this. That's perfect. Fills up and passes around our cube. Brilliant. So this has basically given you the skills now to take this um, to different lengths. If you want to add more effectors, um, if you want to add multiple fluid sources, you can. Uh, it all works together. So yeah, you can you can play around with this and change it how you want. Now you have those skills. Um, be wary that increasing the resolution divisions much higher will result in much higher bake times. Uh, so when we, roughly when you double the resolution, you're going to be uh, multiplying the time by about eight. So a one minute bake doubled will take about eight minutes. So yeah, other than that, uh, also be wary of moving effectors. Uh, Blender struggles with uh, keyframed moving effectors as it has to calculate where the objects are and often the fluid will pass through the meshes. Um, here's a diagram on screen that kind of shows how Blender deals with uh, resolution divisions and, and fluids passing through meshes. But yeah, other than that, let's set a material quickly over here. I'm going to set it to a nice blue color and set this also to gray, I think. Don't really need to change the light. You can if you'd like. Uh, let's render it and see how it looks. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have, let me know down below. If you've got any questions as well, let me know. Um, I'm learning this stuff myself at the moment as well. I'm by no means am I an expert. So if you have any tips for me, um, don't be afraid to, you know, send them my way. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day. Hope you've enjoyed and have learned. Um, bye bye.